Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Now for today's video, it's going to be an introductory video, right? I'm going to release a video series in the near future that is focused on anyone who's interested or who is studying or who just wants to know more about the CBES exam. For those of you guys who don't know what the CBES is, never heard of it in any way, guess what? Stay tuned. Learn a little more about it. It's a little interesting, but more importantly, I'm going to introduce strategies or ways to just approach it that can be useful in many other standardized tests, you know, SAT, ACT, GRE, any one of those. So definitely stay tuned for that. So let's just talk about CBEST really quickly. What is a CBEST and why is it so important? Well, for any one of us who are interested in becoming a substitute teacher in the state of California, you do have to pass what they call the CBEST exam. And that's just this one exam. The difficulty of it is that even though it is just one exam, a lot of us are maybe specialized in specific topics. We might be specialized in English. We might be specialized in history. We might be specialized in math, in science, whatsoever. This test, however, is a generalized test, like your standard star testing or, you know, actually almost like the standard SAT test. There are three topics that you have to focus on. So here's the thing. You have to do well, or at least decently well, in those three topics to pass the exam. Even if you're never going to teach any of the subject that they show. Maybe you're going to be focused on history, but you still need to pass this three exam. Maybe you're only going to be focused on math. Doesn't matter about the other two sections. You still got to pass the exam. So, that's what I'm hoping to do with this video series right now. So, let's just talk about this exam, okay? CBES, the one exam for substitute teachers. So, here's the thing. There are three topics. The first one is going to be English. Right, of course. Now, however, this one has an actual focus. It's going to be on reading or reading comprehension. Okay. The second one, of course, you can guess is math. And that's my primary focus for this video series. Right. And I'm going to utilize math to increase or give you the best chance of passing the exam. Now, of course, there's the third section. Another English, right? By as much, but yes, it's another English. And this one is more on essay writing. Okay, and if I remember correctly, you have to write two essays in this section. Okay, cool. So, now we have this three topic. Well, guess what? First and foremost, let's just talk about the time allotted to each. Well, for the both of these English subjects, you get 1.5 hours, or basically one and a half hours. A total of three hours in just English alone. Right, if you, like me, <laughs> English is not my strong suit, man. It was grueling for basically three hours of English. And for math, you have two hours. Okay, so that's the first thing we should know about. The second thing is that each and every one of these sections are graded on a score scale that is super weird because guess what? All standardized tests do this. I have no idea why, but they just do it anyway. Each and every one of them are graded between 20 to 80. Okay, so whatever score you get is always going to fall between 20 and 80. Now, we understand this, and here's where strategy starts to play or take play, right? So here's the thing. 20 to 80, 20 to 80, 20 to 80. They give you the passing score. So it's sort of a pass-fail, but you do have a score. Luckily, it doesn't matter how like high you pass, how low you pass. If you pass, you pass. The passing score is 123. Okay, so of course you can do the math yourself or you can realize or read their website and the recommended score for each section, you get and guess is well, 123 divided by three is 41. So that's what they recommend, right? At least get a 41 in each section and then you will pass. Well, here's the thing though, right? Some of it is our strong suit. We probably can get a lot more. Some of it is our weak suit. Then, uh, well, we got to stoop up on that. Now, here's the other thing. And this is where it's super amazing and really great, right? You have your recommended score. score. It's not mandatory in any way. So you can start finagling things. The one thing you have to watch out, however, is they do have a bare minimum score. So bare minimum. So, the bare minimum is that your score, no matter what it is, has to be greater than or equal to 37. If it gets lower than 37, you immediately fail. So, <laughs> be very careful of that. So, even if we are going to compensate, and that's the whole bulk of the strategy, right? We're going to compensate for some of our weaker subject. We can't let the weaker subject fall below 37 because then, then we're screwed. So, 
There's that. All right, cool. Well, here's the thing. Since the bare minimum is 37, we don't really have to care too much about the recommended score. If, for example, we focus heavily on math, which I'm hoping to do, right? We can get this to be extremely high, such that even if we hit bare minimum of 37 each, right? For both of these English, right? The reading and the essay, well, guess what? What is that? That's still just 74, right? And then if you really want to do the math, 123 minus 74, there it is, right? Uh, what's that, uh, 49? Right? If you can get a score of 49 or higher in math, then you're good to go. But of course, we're trying to aim as high as possible in math so that we are basically well suited to pass. So that's the bulk of this strategy. If we can focus and truly understand this one and soup up our score, these two won't count nearly as much. And of course, you know, for those of you guys who are really good at English reading and essay, then <laughs> you're good to go. So let's talk about the math section. All right, so in the math section itself, they introduced it or broke it down into three specific category of problems, right? So the first one is estimation, uh, what is this, statistics, principle, and uh, one more, what did they called it, uh, measurement. Okay, that's our first category. Now, here's the thing, and honestly, I'm just introducing you guys to the category because they say it on the website, that's what they break it down as, but there is more nuance, and if you can focus specifically on the bulk, you have the highest chance, and I'm gonna talk about it in more details in just a little bit. The second one is computation and problem solving. And problem solving. Right, and the third one is basically, uh, what is it, numerical and graph representation. The basically, yeah, the graphical. Numerical and graph representation. There it is, okay. So, basically, what does that mean? That means that a lot of the quote unquote complex math, the ones that we are extremely scared of, will not show up in this exam, right? You have your estimation. So estimation is basically, uh, it's kind of annoying these kind of problems, but basically they give you problems that they expect you to be able to round, round numbers, up and down, and then choose the best answer, right? If the problem is written well, then of course the best answer is gonna be obvious, but then you have to be very careful of the trick questions where the problem is not written it so well and all the numbers are so close together. But that's basically what estimation is. It boils down to mainly can you round, do you know how to round, and then figure out or estimate the answer to the problem, right? Statistics principle. Now, in the video series, I'm gonna go over each and every one of the problems in their release practice exam. Statistic principle, it's not heavily emphasized on it. Even though they say it's one of the categories, I remember I think it was like two, maybe three problems out of the 50 problems that you will see in the math section, right? It's focused on statistics principle, right? Measurement, uh, it's interesting. Measurement is basically asking if you know how to find the area. Do you know how to find the perimeter, right? Do you know scaling? Because they love doing that as well. So there's those are the type of problem that usually fall under, I wanna say the measurement category. Now, computation and problem solving, that's um, such a broad and general, I guess you could say umbrella of a term, but basically computation is mainly can you solve the problem? You're usually solving for variables, solving for expressions, just basic algebra, pre-algebra math solving, right? Problem solving itself is interesting. So what I've noticed in what I consider would probably fall under the problem solving categories are problems where they basically give you a, 
a written word problem and they say what information is needed or what is a missing information if I have that I can solve that kind of problem. So I want to say it's more understanding the generalized structure of a word problem and missing and given information. So we're going to go into a little more detail. This is actually focused on quite a deal, right? Just being able to gather information, what is need, what is missing and if we can do that, can we solve the problem? Now, numerical and graphical representation. Now, this is probably the most specific and most obvious of it. Basically, they're going to give you some situations where maybe you have tables, right, that you can see and understand the relation of different data points or variables, and then you can have graphical representation. It's not going to be super complicated where you have to draw like a quadratic equation and all that stuff. No, it's going to be like, here's a graph. Look at the data point. Can you tell me the requested information? And we are going to go into details about that as well. So that's numerical and graphical representation. So almost overarchingly, the problem fall under these three categories. Now, from the practice test alone, what I've noticed that um, a huge emphasis is placed on is mainly estimation. Can you estimate? And then whether you can actually compute and solve the problems. And, what, and there's a good number of information gathering. Right, whether you can see you have enough information, what is missing, what can you gather from basically what's given, and what is um, you shouldn't or should infer. Right, so those are the big ones: the estimation and this guy right here. This one, not nearly as much. This one, maybe a little more than statistics. I've I've noticed at least in the practice exam, the statistics is the most least focus on, most least focus on, huh? uh, the least focus on. All right, and then numerical and graphical representation. Yeah, it's in there, but then the main problems is that every time they put it in there, you're technically just solving anyway. So this, they sort of blur that line a little bit. So these are the three chunks of basically topics that you'll see in the math exam. All right, so for this next section, I'm basically going to talk about each and every one of the topics I saw show up in the practice exam. Now, I'm going to put the link to the practice exam. It's from their website itself. You can see it. You can follow along. Try to do it yourself and solve it and see how well you do. Right? The idea is that even though they give you these three generalized categories, right? I'm going to tell you specifically what I've noticed as the key point in each and every one of those problems. And so here's a list of them, man. Yeah, sorry. My memory is not that great. I, I wrote it all down. The list is the, you have your mean, so you have to understand your average, right? How to find an average, so on and so forth. You have your percentage, right? These are probably what you call the statistics principles, right? You have your percentage, whether you know what a percentage is, how to find a percent, then you have your ratio. And here's the thing. After that, that's basically it. Maybe a, a touch of probability uh, here and there, but mainly a lot of them is going to be on units, right? Do you know how to choose the correct units? That's probably more along the lines of measurements and maybe, uh, I wouldn't say measurement more than estimation, right? They would give you something like, or right, you have this item, what is the appropriate weight unit or this one, what's the appropriate, uh, uh, I guess you could say, was it a uh, volume unit, so on and so forth. So they would have problems like that. Okay, they have, uh, well, of course, perimeters, and then some of them are areas. Then you have your rounding, which is, a, for some reason, very heavily focused on rounding, right? They have a number of problems that are on rounding. And then, of course, you have your negative numbers, your basic, you know, pre-algebra, algebra kind of skills. Can you work with negative number? Can you work with fractions? Can you work with decimals, right? Do you know remainders? Stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, you have your multiplication, your, your expressions, how to solve expressions. Now, information gathering, surprisingly, is also heavily emphasized. That goes from, all right, these are all the information uh, that are given. Are you missing anything? If you're missing, what are you missing to solve it? Or these are all the information. What can you infer from it? So that's one that we will focus on because it, it is a little tricky. A lot of us like to make an assumption based on information given to us. But for those type of problem, you have to specifically be able to justify every logical step why you feel like that conclusion or that specific, I guess you could say, um, result is the one that's correct, right? You can't infer anything. So that's a, a lot of focus is on information gathering. And of course, basic number sense, right? Whether adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, did the answer itself make sense? If it doesn't make sense, you know, then, well, you have to be able to catch that, right? So that's, that's along the line of that. And of course, you have your graph reading, which is, well, basically this guy, right? So those are, I want to say, more specific 
that you'll see in the problem itself, right? I don't like the fact that they generalize categories because usually generalized categories are using umbrella terms like computation and problem solving. And that doesn't mean anything. It's like, how do you study for something like that? So hopefully just by breaking this down, you see a specific topic, specific math topics that are covered at least in the practice exam. And I'm gonna tr pull up more practice exams, of course, and look through it. And then if anything changed, I will try to update it as well. But basically that's what I see from uh, the practice exam that they release. So. There's that. Once again, this is a introductory video just talking about the CBEST, what it comprises of, and focus specifically on the math section. Three different category or generalized chunk, but then I want it to be a little more specific. And then from then on, I'm gonna start releasing video series probably in groups of uh, five or six problem from that specific uh, practice exam. And I'm gonna go in over details on how to solve it, how to approach it, and what happens if you happen to draw a blank during that time, what are some problem solving skills that you can use just to isolate or guess the correct answer. Because guess what? There's no penalty for getting it wrong. The only reason you would never guess is I guess for your own moral compass or whatsoever. Because if you get it wrong, right, it doesn't take off score. So you might as well guess because just by putting an answer down, you have a higher chance of getting it right than if you just left it blank. So stuff like that, right? So hopefully this video didn't run too long, but that's just your basic introduction. For those of you guys, once again, who are not interested in the CBS in any way, at least just check it out to see if you have the skill it takes to become a substitute teacher in the state of California. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.